That was Rigondi's Etude Number no. 1, and we'll have a little lesson on the piece. Follow the lesson for free, uh, but if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition of this piece, and there's a link for that in the description. So this is a, a fairly advanced work. Um, at the, you know, minimum, it'd be like later intermediate, but I think it's, it's kind of an early advanced piece. Bar to bar, like measure to measure, uh, there's nothing particularly difficult about the piece, um, nothing hugely awkward or anything like that. However, stringing it together in an elegant way is, is most certainly the challenge in this piece. Um, and, and certainly the inter inner section of this piece also offers, um, and the, the last section too, offers a couple of sections that are just a little bit um, hairy to handle, you know, like they're, you have to keep your calm and keep your technique together. And I think that's the, the challenge of the piece. Like the first etude of many um, etude collections, I, I think this one has um, a lot of different musical elements that we're working on. Certainly in this piece, we have um, some, some obvious like uh, melodic passages and scale work, but we also have a lot of arpeggios with, uh, with a clear melody on the top. So uh, keeping all of that straight and presenting it in, in, in a clear way, but also in, for Rigondi, maybe more than other composers, in an elegant and and, um, and tasteful way. So for my edition, um, I'm really going for like a performance edition. I've changed a couple of the slurs to to make it more consistent, where I thought it's more typically consistent. 
Um, I had access to one of the manuscripts, but not all of them. There's like four of them for this one. So there's lots of variables, but it's a pretty established piece as well. So, um, you know, I've heard it so much that uh, that influences me, of course. But there's a couple of things that I that I did mark in for consistency and just changed a couple of things. All the notes I, I pretty much kept the same, though. Let's just first talk about some some basic goals and then we'll we'll do a little bit of a walkthrough but I, you know there's so much to go over and it's a fairly advanced piece so I don't think going measure by measure is necessarily uh, is, is necessary. Uh, make sure that you've practiced um, other works before attempting these ones. you know the Carcassia etudes would be great preparation for this um, and and then also getting in some of the romantic spirit so maybe some merits and things like that um, might help as well. But also, you know, the source studies too, like a lot of the legato aspects of this piece uh, match soar more than a lot of composers probably. Um, so, you know, in the first section, you have a lot of these like silky lines and we don't want to be too blunt with them. We want them to have some freedom. Like not metronomic, but not too far out either. But just like you know, you can follow the line to its destination point, creating some nice curvature in the phrasing, and uh, making sure there's momentum towards destination points. So that that kind of is about that section. The inner section has a lot of this, you know, melody, but you have to include it with everything else. So just making sure that melody pops out and keeping the texture clear, the accompaniment relatively soft and suppressed, um, and then focusing on your legato, just it, it makes it quite the musical challenge and there's a couple of shifts that are, are tricky. Not so tricky that they're impossible to play or anything like that, but again, tricky to maintain that beautiful legato while um, accomplishing all of the shapes. So it's it's that kind of piece where um, the it's I would say it's half musical challenge. It's not just technique, it's a lot of musicality challenge in this particular work. I think that's about that's about it though. I think we'll do a walkthrough of the piece. I can explain a couple of things that I do, but in general, I'm going to go through it fairly quickly because I think you, at this stage of a work, you should have worked your way up to this level um, so that you're you're relatively ready for it. All the trills in this piece are from the written note to the upper auxiliary and returning to the written note. So there, G, A, G, and they're all like that. They'll all be a slur to the upper um, diatonic note. In some of those sections, um, it's just really useful to use the open string to shift. Same thing there, right? Open. section there um, I decided to stay in first position on um, some other additions um, go up up the neck but I use my fourth finger on the C sharp that way three can grab the G F sharp I really like moving up to the the, the bar at the seventh fret um, right after that open D, uh, grab it. I let things sustain a little bit longer up to the B. I cut the sustain, then I bar, keep a little bit of sustain, and single out the last note. 
I found doing anything else just either felt like there wasn't enough s sustain or if it was turning an arpeggio into just like a melodic line. So um, I'm really mixing there. You could hold the whole thing down. But, but that seems too washed out as well. So my solution was just to get up there, sustain, cut, sustain, single out the final note. Then you're into this beautiful melody and arpeggio texture, a very common texture of the classical and, and uh, romantic era. But in this particular case, um, just lots of activity. Uh, Rigondi is an advanced player and he and composer and he, he just adds a lot of material to go through. So lots of shapes. Nothing too crazy though. Um, these A's and the lower G's that come in the next measure um, were actually up the octave in the manuscript that I had, um, but they just don't work very well that way. Um, maybe on a 19th century guitar that's smaller, that would work, but um, almost every, well, every single performance I've seen of it, uh, players all just use the lower notes, the lower octave. Just on this one. And this G. third finger through this just because it, it's it's kind of a hairy section I felt like the guide finger with the third finger was really helpful there um, you might get a little bit of glissando in there but I think that's okay um, reduce it though Uh, that section there is it's a little bit it's a little bit hairy, lots of jumping around, but it's all fairly straightforward. So just practice them individually and get each fragment together and then start piecing them together as best you can. So measure 23 here. This is probably the hardest part of the piece in some ways. first position here and sneak my second finger over. I just felt it was a little cleaner than jumping up. I changed some of the slur patterns in that section there for consistency. Keeping it on those inner notes. scripts do but seems more consistent that way musically so that's a, a bit, little bit of a challenge there you know jumping up with two in, in the bar but it, it, you, you get quite used to it and it's not that hard of a grab after your second finger your shape is already pretty much aligned so you just have to shift it up so it's not as bad as you think that slur pattern as well for consistency. Let's do that again. sections uh, that's not that hard that section um but it throws me sometimes it's at the very end of the section i'm starting to get mentally and physically fatigued a little bit and doing all these glissandos and jumping around could be tricky i think the key sometimes in this piece though is to make sure you sustain notes a little bit extra which can like lower the intensity level of your hands you know like you're not always moving you can just sustain notes you know making sure you really get that note and that note. It's 
nice when you really nail those you can you can calm it all down and be technically more accurate so then it returns to the first section but it'll change soon section can be a little bit challenging in in some ways I find it easier because you're so it's so fun and so active that um, I know what to do but the the danger is that you get fatigued uh, th through it and you start getting sloppy so again I think sustaining um, some of the chords not extra but just for their full value kind of like a sauce noodle mark on them uh, is really really calms things down but doesn't change the tempo or anything like that like these chords, make sure you sustain, have some fun, sustain, have some fun. In those sections, I do a, a bar early, I change the slur pattern for consistency. up here do a bar a little tiny half bar to get the chord that's into 45 I do bars early throughout this section bar to get the chord bar to get the chord stay in upper position I felt like the musicality of putting some extra like scoop on those two notes mixed well with the shift you know I, I felt like that makes more sense than whatever whatever the alternative would be Instead of that, that's how I practiced it. Fragment it, become very confident with the fragments, and then try to piece it together. That's certainly the most difficult uh, measure there is that it, it's just it's a lot of shifting a lot of accuracy involved lots of opportunities for squeaking so you just have to work that one more than the than the rest of them right um, and then this little rocket end Here, open, um, the manuscript that I was looking at anyway does have that slur, and certainly that allows you to stay in position. An alternative might be... To do the arpeggio there instead of going it is kind of weird throwing a slur into uh, uh, two measures of just pure arpeggios that sustain that said um, you know it's in the manuscript and um, or at least one of them one of the manuscripts and um, he uses slurs a lot in this piece in a similar way um, hard to say I It's not 
that hard to jump up. Ah, but it does off, it, it's a little bit of a tricky shift because you're sustaining this E. But I mean, there's lots of jumps in this piece. I just felt it disrupted my my hand movements a little bit, but of course I would love I would prefer the sound of the the sustained arpeggio, but it uh, I just felt it uh, it was just a little disruptive, so I kept it as a slur. So that's the basics of the piece. Um, I hope you find that useful. It's a piece that I really think just requires a lot of extra time. It's not that hard. I would say it's even easier than some of the merits you know um, intermediate like merits pieces, but. But something about it, maybe the elegance of it or the legato aspect of it, just made me have to practice it quite a bit extra compared to some pieces, uh, which made it a great etude and uh, lots of different textures to, to handle, but um, certainly a consistent sound and, and just a high quality composition with really nice harmonies and whatnot. So, hope you enjoy it.